Hello, I'm the Reverend Joanne Tatro, and I'd like to welcome you to this service of virtual worship with Church of the Holy Comforter in Lutherville on this Sunday, November 5th, as we celebrate All Saints Day. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, it is only by your gift that your faithful people offer you true and laudable service. Grant that we may run without stumbling to obtain your heavenly promises. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Revelation to John. After this, I, John, looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of falsehoods against you on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. And for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. What is a covenant? Any thoughts? What is a covenant? We may think about a covenant in a variety of ways. We may think legally, morally, ethically, maybe spiritually. Because ultimately, a covenant is an agreement by two parties that is rooted in mutual promises. One might immediately think of marriage. That is a covenantal agreement where promises are made about how each spouse will care for the other and be in relationship together. And when you have a new rector-elect, they will meet with our senior warden, Denise, and our treasurer, Robin, um, as I met with them before I started here, to work on something called a letter of agreement, which is a covenantal agreement with specific expectations for both the priest, in this case the rector, and for the parish. And when you have a liturgy celebrating the new ministry that you will have mutually, you and your next rector, uh, and that your next rector will have with you, you will hear in that liturgy so much covenantal language about expectations for the mutual ministry that you will both have together. And this covenantal language and understanding of relationship began for us as Christians with Abram and God beginning to have conversations about their, what their relationship was going to be like. And that started way back in Genesis 12, where we hear the Lord has said to Abram, go from your country, your people and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse and all peoples on the earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went as the Lord had told him. This is the first of several covenantal promises that God makes to Abram. And it begins with this particular covenantal relationship. Do this and I will bless you. Go from your country and I will make you into a great nation. God's promises to God's people continue to be with us. God's promises to be with us and to be in relationship with us continue to this day because God is always present. God always keeps God's promises and it is up to us whether or not we are going to reach towards God as well of our own free will and build a relationship with God knowing that God does not force anyone into a relationship with God and that we can build our relationship with God through prayer, through reading scripture, and by living into God's hopes for us, by loving God, loving our neighbors, and loving ourselves. For us, the sign of this covenantal relationship with God is rooted in our sacraments, our sacraments that have outward, physical, tangible things that represent the inward spiritual grace that is God's presence moving within us and by which we receive God's grace within our lives. Um, Martin Luther was right (laughs) to say that of our seven sacraments, there are two that are absolutely essential and five that are absolutely optional. Baptism and Eucharist are absolutely essential to our covenantal relationship with God as Christians. And then there's confirmation, marriage, ordination, Reconciliation of a penitent, which uh, sometimes will be referred to as confession, but we have a different understanding of that than our Catholic siblings. And then, of course, unction, which is also called anointing for healing. Those are all optional. And one could even argue that all five of those spring from our baptism and Eucharist. But that's another sermon. So why does this all matter? What does this covenant And this covenantal relationship that we have with God mean for us here and now in Lutherville, Maryland. Well, today is All Saints Sunday. And it's one of the four days in our church calendar that are particularly set aside as especially appropriate for baptism or renewal of the baptismal vows. 
This is because we uplift the big S saints of the church today for how they lived into their baptized life, how they renounced Satan, repented of their sins, and continued to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior by showing forth their love of God. We remember today that we are connected to these big S saints through the Holy Spirit and through the communion of saints, which also means that we are connected to the little S saints as well. And what I mean by little S saints is that these are folks that we know, our family, our friends, our neighbors, teachers, shopkeepers, bakers, maybe even clerics, anyone who has illumined the way of Christ for us in our lives, anyone who has shown us what our baptismal covenant means and how we might live into that ourselves, anyone who has shown us the light of Christ is a little S saint. One could argue they could even be a little S saint, whether they believe in Christ or not, but it's about their relationship with God. And we will especially remember these saints during our Eucharistic prayer in gratitude for their love and witness to Christ in our lives. Perhaps even if we don't remember their names, but if we remember their witness and the love of God that they showed us, then that is an opportunity for us to offer our gratitude to their witness to God. So how are we also to be saints in our own lives? How are we in turn to illumine the path to Christ for others? This is one of the big questions and calls of the Christian life. And it is going to look very different for each of us, but it is always, always rooted in our baptism and how God continues to reveal God's self to us in and through living into this covenantal relationship that we have with God. So today is a day to reflect And remember in gratitude, while also looking ahead to ponder what it means to be in a covenantal relationship with God, with our neighbors, and with ourselves, so that we folk may one day find ourselves among the saints who have found favor with God in ages past, that we may praise God in union with them and give glory to God through God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
through the Paschal mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death and raised with him to newness of life. Therefore, let us renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism by which we once renounce Satan and all his works and promise to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his holy Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. <laughs>